coming down the uh, <clears throat> the driver, the passenger side, excuse me, see I have the awning out on this side. Now this awning I believe is not original to the coach. Uh, based on paperwork and just based on design, I don't think it is. You can see it goes clear down almost the entire side and this is just, you don't really see a lot of this in the newer ones from what I've looked at. Um, you really can get a lot of people or a lot of tables and stuff on. You can have a picnic table back here, another one back there. You can set the grill up under there. You can totally be covered. I mean, when we go down, it's almost about as wide as the coach is. And you can raise it up higher or lower. There's a center support beam, which I don't have in right now just for showing you the awning. And coming up the passenger side, here we have our hot water tank. It's a six gallon hot water tank. Runs on LP gas. Uh, this part here, the solenoid, was just replaced last year. It's a, about a $130 part. That's basically the gas valve that allows the fuel go in to go uh, into the burner there to be ignited. Um, this has, does have a little bit of rust, but it's basically because right here is where the drain plug is. So in the winter, when you winterize your drain plug, all the water just dumps right there. Just not the greatest design. And there's also a uh, thermostat there and a, and a high temperature cutoff. Those have both been replaced. You can see the foam on there that tells what it is. That's brand new. That's been done within the past two years. Everything I mentioned, we've owned since um, since March of 09. Everything I mentioned has been done since then, a uh, majority of which was done right when we got it. And we'll talk about a little bit what's been done mechanically to the coach in a second. Over here is the generator. This is a 4 kilowatt or 4,000 watt generator. This runs everything on the coach when you're not plugged in. Uh, so when this is running, you, there's a roof AC, which we'll talk about in a second. There's a microwave, which I'll show you on the inside. Um, this, uh, this will run all those devices as long as on the other side, remember I showed you where it was plugged in. This will run all that. I'm going to start it up. You do start it from the inside, uh, so you don't have to come out here and do it, but I'm going to show you just you can do it, start it, and uh, so it starts up and it will uh, And you can shut it off from here. So if you're ever outside and you just need to shut it off or it's a secondary in case the main, um, the main switch doesn't work, which has never been the case for me. Um, there's very low hours. I'll check on the inside. When we go inside, I'll show you where the hour meters are. Very low hours on that. Uh, it's been serviced last year, oil change. And to be honest with you, we hardly use it because we're usually in a place we plug in or when we're driving. We did use it once last year to drive with the air conditioner on and it worked great. Uh, it does draw off the main tank, which is in the rear of the coach. And there is a limitation once that tank drops to a certain level, I want to say it's about halfway, the generator won't run because it doesn't want you to run out of gas by running your generator. So usually it's about a quarter. This one might be a little higher. Uh, coming up the, the side again, we have the uh, outlet for the onboard furnace, which runs on, on propane. And we also have the back of the refrigerator. The refrigerator runs on propane or also runs on electric when you're running. Uh, at, a at the campground so you can plug in when you're there and when you're getting to a campground you have it running on LP this way you can make sure your um, your food stays cold coming up the other side or coming up the passenger side here are two outlet two plugs when you're running the generator or you're plugged in on house power at the campground um, you can plug in outside so if you want a radio if you want to plug in a uh, if you want to do some cooking outside anything like that plug in a toaster that type of thing there's the in main entry door I'll we'll talk about that in a second and this compartment is very similar to the one I showed you on the other side. They're pretty deep. Um, they go back pretty much to the frame of the coach. Uh, in there, we usually store chairs. You can see some firewood and things like that uh, we can store in there. And the last compartment coming up the passenger side is where the batteries are. There are three batteries on this coach. The one on the left you see is for the engine. The one on the right, and there's one behind it, which you can't really see. Uh, you might be able to see the post in there. There are two uh, coach batteries, deep cycle. Those are brand new last year, and the engine battery is brand new, I believe, the year before, both from uh, AutoZone up the road, or Auto Parts Plus. Uh, so they have a warranty on them, I believe. I have to double check that. But And then we get to the wheel simulators again. Now you're going to show you something. The tires have excellent tread. You can see right there. But to be honest with you, they're showing a little bit of dry rotting. So. If I were to take this coach going across country, I would put new tires on it. If I'm going to go camping to the Poconos from northwest New Jersey where it's located, I probably wouldn't worry about it. But uh, I just want to be honest about that. The tires have excellent, excellent tread. I'll show you the back tires here. You see the back tires? And I can show you the other side. And while we're here, show you a little bit underneath. 
There is some surface rust underneath, but nothing major. Uh, but the frame has some surface rust on it. I've been under there working on stuff. We had the exhaust done and things like that. All right, and we're going to come back around the front of the coach, you see. All right, here we go. Back to the front. Now, I'm going to pop the hood for you. And one second. Let's go put this, hold this like this. Bear with me. Prop, prop it up. And go around and start it for you. So this is a Chevy 454. Got about 64,000 miles on it. Gonna shut it off again so you can actually hear me talk. Uh, it's a 454 with, once again, you see how handy that driver's door is instead of having to go all the way around. So 454, it's got a remanufactured carburetor on it since we've had it. Uh, also have a new master cylinder on it. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the engine and drivetrain at this point. Uh, we've had brakes done all the way around, uh, pads and rotors, or excuse me, pads, excuse me, pads and uh, discs, not rotors, pads and discs, um, all the way around when we got it, so less than 5,000 miles ago. Uh, the air conditioning has been charged. The chassis air does work. The engine air conditioning does work on this. Um, we also had the master cylinder I mentioned in the carburetor and then the exhaust manifolds, which are common with the 454s I learned to have them go. They've been replaced on both sides. Um, so all that work's been done. One little thing that needs to get done, I believe the exhaust manifolds might need to be tightened up or where they meet the one front pipe probably needs to be tightened because there is a little bit of an exhaust leak. Uh, you can hear a little bit, but nothing major. You're not sounding like a, a dragster going down the highway, but just want to be honest about that. It's made it to a uh, turbo 400 three-speed transmission. Once again, this is a Chevy chassis, so if you do any work on it, if you're handy and you want to do the oil or you want to do things like that, you just go and ask them for it. Uh, it's actually an 83 because that's when they designed it and then handed it off to Winnebago. Um, you just go to your parts store and get an oil filter from an 83 uh, P30, which is what they call it, like a step van. Um, all right, so let's go up on the roof. I'm going to show you the roof. I want to be honest with a couple things. There was a little bit of a leak in the back. It developed over the winter, and you can see a little bit of it right there. I'm going to point it out with my finger, and I'm going to show you some more on top. That back corner, the cabinet did get a little water in the cabinet. I don't want to be. I don't want to be dishonest. Um, Literally, as soon as it, it, I put a tarp over it, as soon as we noticed, I didn't want to get it that bad. And um, last, yeah, this past weekend, I actually put that what you see there is actually a membrane tape. It's very sticky. Uh, I can get you the name of it. It's meant for repairing RV roofs, among other things. It's very sticky and very flexible. So I took up all the old silicone caulk that was there where somebody had done some repairs before and put this tape down. So I'm hoping that fixed it. Now I can't, you know, obviously I'm not going to shoot water in there just to be safe, but, um, you know, I believe it's, that's where the leak was coming from. I believe it's fixed. But once again, it's a 25-year-old coach. Speaking of leaks, that's the only leak I know of in the roof. The only exception would be I can see other spots over the years. Now keep in mind this is 25 years old where there's some, a little bit of water got in or a little bit of the wallpapers peeling, but that could also be the glue failing. Um, but I don't see any standing water spots or anything like that. So I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm going to come up on the roof and uh, show you, show you how that is, because I, and show you where those repairs are done, and walk around on the rest of the roof.